Cloud gaming is an interesting topic with a rich history. Back in 2012, I used OnLive before it went defunct to try and play Red Faction Armageddon, and the experience left me very disappointed. OnLive was a choppy mess, but in my desperate attempt to play the sequel to one of my favourite games at the time, I made do. From then, I steered clear from cloud gaming services until more recently, becoming familiar with technologies similar to it. From Xbox's remote play for the Series X when the TV is in use, to using Questlink for a truly wireless virtual reality gaming experience, and finally, using Parsec for my PC when I don't fancy being bound to a desk. Whilst not perfect, these provided serviceable gaming experiences much better than what I remember wireless gaming being, especially Questlink. Being able to wirelessly play PC VR was a game changer. Given my mostly positive experiences with these technologies, my thoughts on cloud gaming have changed over the years, but I'll be honest, it's still not my preferred way to enjoy my favourite games. It's merely a, if I have to. I'm sure a lot of people feel this way. Cloud gaming does have its fans, but it's not massively adopted. Or is it? Recently, the CMA have been causing problems with Microsoft, who, if you don't know, are trying to purchase Activision Blizzard for the humble amount of $68.7 billion. Their reason? Microsoft's monopoly over the cloud gaming market. For them to reject such a massive acquisition based on this suggests Microsoft has a massive market share in the gaming space when it comes to cloud gaming. And they do. But when compared to the rest of the industry, this is inconsequential. With that, this entire ordeal got me thinking, how viable is cloud gaming in today's climate? So today, I'm going to dive into cloud gaming, exploring the convenience, outlining the benefits and problems, understand who this technology is designed for, how games may change if cloud gaming becomes mainstream, and ask the big question, is cloud gaming ready? The concept of cloud gaming is pretty cool. Gamers can enjoy their favourite titles from anywhere in the world because there are zero downloads. Just like Netflix with video streaming, games you want to play are streamed to your chosen device. All you need is a valid input method like a controller or a mouse and keyboard. Additionally, like Netflix, the majority of these services are on a subscription model and you can have different fees. Some services have you purchase the hardware where you must buy the games too, and others include a bunch of titles and access for one monthly payment. Comparing a subscription-based cloud gaming service to something like Parsec seems unfair, and it is. Parsec is a way to remotely play games you own on hardware you own. These subscription services give you access to machines in the cloud to game on. And whilst the idea of remote play is similar to cloud gaming, playing games over the internet, accessing hardware in the cloud comes with many potential hurdles. Games should be available for everyone to enjoy. For that, games must be easily accessed by anyone who wants to explore what these great experiences have to offer. Whilst cloud gaming does theoretically improve the accessibility of games, I'm a massive advocate for allowing games to be played in an offline environment. My video on why games need bots preaches this. But let's say you buy into cloud gaming as the primary way to consume this media, and then you run into trouble with your internet access. For instance, recently here in the UK, Virgin Media have been suffering major outages for sometimes hours. Now, some people are quite fortunate. Those with a PC capable of gaming or have access to consoles can for the most part enjoy their games unscathed by the outage. But for cloud gaming users, you are unable to play anything until a connection is restored or you resort to mobile data. But that introduces a new problem. Some people are lucky enough to have zero restrictions on their internet data usage. However, others have data caps on their plans and whilst downloading games will contribute to that data usage, once the game is downloaded, aside from patches, data usage won't be as high. But constantly streaming games to your device, even if it's a single player game, will contribute to your data usage whilst gaming in the cloud. For some, that alone can be a massive deal breaker. But it gets worse. I like to own my games. I have a Steam library, which are all digital items I can lose at a moment's notice. This is something I became really conscious of, and last year I picked up the hobby of game collecting, and I've amassed a humble collection. Preserving games is important to me, and being able to own a physical copy is one step closer to preservation. Services like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate give you access to hundreds of games at any given time. Included is Xbox Cloud Gaming, it's a seemingly perfect solution. One subscription to game at a very competitive price. But Xbox can take away games from Game Pass at any given moment. It happens all the time. And I've seen multiple people stop what they're playing to play the titles leaving Game Pass. That means with cloud gaming, you won't own your games. This isn't just a problem with cloud gaming. All digital storefronts have this issue. You buy a license to access the game, but if the game disappears, it's your problem. Even still, buying physical media doesn't always protect you from cloud gaming due to a recent trend on the Nintendo Switch. 
I want to preface this with the fact that I love my Switch. There's a whole video on my channel discussing the untapped potential of the Nintendo Switch and it's really one of my favourite videos on this channel. Anyway, the hardware of the Switch is severely underpowered when compared to even the last generation of consoles, and this is a console that was released in 2017, four years after the 8th generation. The Switch is home to many great experiences, but naturally isn't always able to house games PlayStation and Xbox can. With that, publishers have introduced cloud versions of their games onto the Switch, meaning when you play one of these games on the Switch, you're not running it natively on the hardware, and instead, the game is being streamed to the device. There are physical boxes you can buy that have just a download code in it. Why do publishers think that people opting to buy what they think is a physical copy of the game believe that giving people an empty case with a download code is acceptable? Doesn't that defeat the purpose of the Switch? This is a portable device designed to play games anywhere with or without an internet connection. Why would you buy a gaming experience on a console to the state of internet access? But let's say none of that matters to you. The convenience of cloud gaming outweighs the cons we've discussed. You've been paying for your monthly subscription and in addition, have been buying games from the store to play in the cloud. Now, you want to pause your subscription because you finally got a gaming PC. So that's what you do. Your subscription is paused and you go to download your games to play and... Oh wait, you can't. Because your subscription is inactive, which leaves your games inaccessible. This harkens back to the importance of earning your games and why cloud gaming is at such a disadvantage. Despite all your contributions, all the games you've purchased are worthless while you have no subscription and following that, what's to stop the company from putting the plug, taking your money and the games you've bought with them? At any given moment, these cloud gaming providers may realise that maintaining this project is too costly and decommission the system. Google Stadia is their perfect case study for this. Launching late 2019 to compete for just three short years before shutting down at the beginning of 2023. Fortunately, Google reimbursed players every penny they spent on the Stadia store. But not all companies may be so generous, leaving players out of pocket. So after all these glaring issues with cloud gaming, what would be the reasons to actually buy into it? There are very compelling reasons why someone might game in the cloud. A massive one is cost. Around the world right now, many people are struggling through economic hardships. But even still, they should be allowed to escape into the world of gaming. Some people can't justify the initial investment into gaming hardware. With how expensive consoles and gaming PCs are to some, not to mention the fact we've only really just recovered from the hardware shortage and scalping prices, a subscription-based system like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate could be a great way to get your gaming fix. As long as you have a device connected to the internet and a valid input method like a Chromebook, you can game to your heart's content. Game Pass even supplies the games, just pick something and play. And it really is as fast as that, because there are no downloads and no updates. I can't tell you how many times in recent months I've gone to play a game only to find out I need to update what I want to play. Data centers in the cloud are always connected, always on and always ready to update to the latest patch. If a game is on the service, you are likely playing the most recent version. Consoles are massively better at keeping games updated than what they used to be, but PCs are still way behind with keeping games updated. You need to open all the different store clients every time you use your PC just to keep your games up to date. Cloud gaming makes updates to your games more exciting, not something to dread because you have to wait to play. Following the fast access to games, cloud gaming enables you to access your saves from whichever device you're playing on, since the save, like the game, is in the cloud. No issues with manually syncing to the cloud, leading to potential file conflicts. No issues with console manufacturers locking cloud saves behind a paywall, Nintendo. Game saves are important, and cloud gaming protects your saves from hardware failures. Just like preserving saves, it's also important to preserve gaming hardware and software. But not everyone feels this way. Some may not have the room to store a massive amount of games and hardware. Others just don't want a massive collection and that's okay. I understand. This is where cloud gaming shines. No bulky consoles, no swapping physical media, just a controller and your phone or laptop and you can play games. This hardware agnostic approach to cloud gaming enables the continuous evolution of gaming hardware. Data centers are beefy and will continue to grow in technological power. Power games can really harness. Since games won't be bound to generational hardware that only has a major refresh every seven years or so, games can continue to grow in size and scope, allowing for some truly amazing experiences to be crafted. For instance, running ChatGPT games in the cloud may soon be a viable option rather than relying on hardware the end user has, since cloud gaming doesn't need to be locked to one machine. Instead, one machine can host the game environment, another can handle the ChatGPT interactions between the player and NPCs, and even simulate conversations the player isn't in the vicinity of. Even then, if we still lock users to one machine, the quick evolution of AI as of now will thrive in an ecosystem that isn't bottlenecked by hardware from years ago. The Xbox Series and PS5 consoles are coming up to three years old this year. 
It won't be long before these consoles are pushed to their absolute limits and will need yet another technology refresh. This simply won't happen with cloud gaming. Games will continue to get better and you'd be none the wiser as to why. Some of these benefits do sound great, especially the constant evolution of hardware and now you may be wondering if cloud gaming is for you. There is an audience for cloud gaming, no doubt, but let's start with who cloud gaming is not for. Anyone who wants to compete competitively in any form of multiplayer game will be at a major disadvantage to those playing natively on hardware they own. The internet nowadays is fast and mostly reliable, but there will always be latency when gaming on a machine in a data center miles away from you. In an environment where every millisecond counts, competitive gamers should steer clear from cloud gaming. Following that, anyone who cares about owning their media over feeding a corporation a monthly subscription for convenience should also steer clear from cloud gaming. Any digital games you may buy, you won't actually own. And there's a major risk you could lose access to the games you've paid for, be it through cancelling your subscription or in a more dire situation, a company closure or even an account breach. Finally, if you have an unreliable connection to the internet, perhaps steering clear from cloud gaming is a good idea because the entire concept revolves around a strong internet connection. Latency, compression artifacts and drop frames are just a few issues you can run into when gaming in the cloud, which can really taint your experience, sometimes ruining games entirely. With that said, if you're already invested in one of the ecosystems, for instance Xbox, you already own a console, paying for Game Pass Ultimate and claiming all your games digitally rather than buying physical media, cloud gaming is just another way to enjoy your favourite games. Alternatively, let's say you used to game loads but stopped for some reason, or you're someone new to gaming and need an introduction to see if gaming is for you. The relatively low price of cloud gaming is a great segue into the amazing experiences developers have crafted for you to enjoy. Like I said, consoles can seem expensive to some, but you're entitled to enjoy these great games. A cheaper price can seem a lot less daunting to someone trying to return to gaming or someone brand new. Cloud gaming is a mixed experience. I think the risk of companies putting the plug alone is too much to bear. So when it comes to buying on platforms where their business isn't just gaming, I won't take the plunge. This is how I can justify buying games on Steam, but I can't buy games on the Xbox store. At any point, Microsoft could theoretically shut down Xbox. Not to say they would, but I'm a lot less fearful of Valve shutting down Steam since it's basically their business model now. Like I said, cloud gaming does have its place, but I don't think it'll become so mainstream to the point where games are evolving at a major pace due to technologies in data centers. The Switch is a monumental success, and with Valve releasing the Steam Deck a little over a year ago, portable devices are looking like the more practical way to enjoy your games anywhere. These devices will continue to release, and as Valve continues to price their handheld PC competitively, along with Microsoft looking to optimize Windows for them, it seems like this is the way forward. Personally, I don't think I'll use cloud gaming much. It's a cool technology and concept, but I hate my gaming experience being entirely bound to the internet. However, I regularly use remote play systems like Parsec and Questlink, and every time I use them, I am blown away of how fluid and responsive they are. Questlink is out of this world. It doesn't even feel like I'm playing wirelessly, it's that responsive. And Parsec? Well, I've been streaming Parsec from my Ethernet connected PC to my wirelessly connected laptop, and while there's a tiny amount of delay, it really isn't noticeable and perfectly playable for the single player experiences I like to enjoy. With how great these remote play experiences have been for me, I've got my eyes set on a Steam Deck so I can play any PC game compatible with Proton on the go and then stream them wirelessly from my desktop if I want to play somewhere other than my desk. What do you think will happen with cloud gaming? Maybe you disagree with the idea of devices like the Steam Deck paving the way for gaming experiences. Perhaps you think cloud gaming is just a fad, with all implementations bound to end up like Stadia. Or you might be a massive advocate for cloud gaming and the potential it has. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Whilst you're down there, pressing the like button is something I'll appreciate greatly. It really helps me gauge if you enjoyed this video. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed this video, then maybe you'll like the video I made on the untapped potential of the Nintendo Switch. The video outlines how companies are failing to capitalize on the massive install base of the console and what I feel the Switch needs. But maybe instead you prefer to learn why games need bots and how bots can be the saving grace for failing multiplayer games. Or how they can actually offer a more enjoyable experience when compared to playing online. Finally, if you want to see my content more regularly, be sure to subscribe to my videos can appear in your subscriptions. Did you know that only 0.9% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to InfoNow? Subscribe now!